Hello, alright, um, another episode time. Well, I've been busy. Uh, I'm, it, it's good to keep me busy, or I, you don't want to know what happens when I'm not busy. However, um, I, yeah, I, this has actually been a, little, well, a personal project, I think most of them are, but um, I, what I have is a um, Index K2 Explorer. Um, it's an inflatable kayak for two people. Um, quite, an, well, not too expensive, about £150 for one. Good fun in the summer, not right now because it's freezing cold. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I actually found that I really enjoy being on the uh, on rivers, lakes, etc. You know, it's quite really peaceful. It's like kind of a different lifestyle in that respect. Um, and I, I kind of found that pleasure through uh, this this inflatable kayak that I still have. I haven't killed it yet. And uh, yeah, but you know, it's it's so peaceful and relaxing. I thought, you know what? Let's uh, let's take this paddle kayak and uh, make it electric to some degree, so I can just sit back and relax and take in all the scenery, uh, well, you know, birds, animals, etc. Um, so I had a first version, but it it kind of worked, but it you know didn't any other tricks. So what I've done is I've got this box here of tricks. Hope you can see that. Okay. Um, yeah, it's very important. This is not caster sugar, um, but <laughs> I enjoyed using Tupperware <laughs> for it. And then I have uh, some propulsion and steering, and I have a controller. Um, so this is like almost version two of it, basically. But uh, I'll explain you, run you through it. So on to, on most uh, well paddle boards, kayaks, inflatable thingies, they have a fin or a keel mount on the bottom. So what I've done here is uh, I've made an adapter to fit that mount so what you do is you pop your boat in the water lift it up a little bit and then slide this in obviously take this rc clip pin off put it back in above your ankle it's mounted now these are uh 20 amp i think uh waterproof underwater motors now i don't think they're seaworthy but you at your own risk there i've got two of them because why not and i've got not a uh, 20 kilo uh servo and that actuates this fin because obviously you still need some sort of linear direction uh, as inflatable kayaks they tend to get blown about a bit knocked about a bit so having a rudder is really nice and then this is to stop the weeds build up now it could have been better 3d printed now now you probably notice that servos aren't waterproof uh, so this is in a cover and then I've actually filled the server up with mineral oil and then I've sealed that with hot glue it took a lot of sealing to get it not to keep leaking oil everywhere, but it's now it's been out probably about ten or fifteen times this particular servo mount, and it's still working. So I take that as a win. Uh, lots of cables. Um, now moving on to the main box. Um, so as I say, car beats and top of it. Let's open her up. I'm running through this. Um, hopefully I don't need to zoom. Let me try zooming in. Okay, good, that works beautifully. So what we got. Um, I need to check this for temperatures. I, I have run full power tests that I'll link a video in a well, I'll show you a video of in a sec, but in essence cooling, uh, overkill back, so it says a five volt. I should reverse it a little bit more. Probably see on the bottom side. Um, I made a battery pack. Uh, it's about three to four hundred watts. Um, if you want to see how I make battery packs, then uh, if you jump onto the other video, it's, I think it's named 18650 battery pack. There's a few episodes on that. But basically, I made a small version. It's underneath there, balance lead, 6S battery, so 24 volts. Um, I may try to make this one a, a lot more, a lot tidier, let's say. Uh, big old switch, you know, because you can't beat a good old rocker switch. Um, uh, main board, uh, so I, I made two custom PCBs for this using a router. Um, and they all come out and unplug everything. So this provides drop down voltage for the main board and the servo. Uh, it's 30 amps. I only need probably 10 but I had one so why not. Now I've got all the connections to the motor you can swap them around. Um, fuse uh, underneath here I think it needs uh, refining a bit but because there's wires going over it. It's a 30 amp amp meter um, that the uh, board here can read. Uh, fused, obviously, because you know I've had problems. Let's put it away with fake fuses. In fact, this is a fake fuse, and I've, I've got to find the other pack. But um, don't recommend them. Be very careful on Amazon. Oh, <laughs> lucky me. 
and dismantling set of fake views. Let me just get that out. Um, but, oh, bye bye. Excuse me one moment. Right. So these are just punched aluminium. This doesn't. Basically, they're, ch they're cheap and Chinese. Very careful on Amazon with these. Um, but that means this won't burn out. Normally, there's a different material or, you know, a certain material that sits between the two points that will act as a fuse, but this does not. So I'm going to throw it in a bit. Um, so a few holes are for the fuse holder, battery connector for charging, um, on off switch for the main power, and then I I try to separate this, the main power and the power for all this because this can also roll, read the voltage of the of the box. Uh, normally when you have them sub, you know when you have your main draw and the bit you want to read, you want them as far away as possible. So I use the balance lead, and um, so I actually power this off with the balance lead because it's not a heap load of power, maybe a, an amp, worst case, couple of amps if you twitch the servo, it's fine uh, basically, but obviously I could pop the lid off here, but I don't think you need to see a battery. Um, now these two, these two, go, oh, let me zoom out again, uh, these two guys, they talk to each other via Bluetooth low energy, 2.4 gigahertz, basically range, you see the custom board. Um, first time I've used it, so it was an interesting experience, let's put it that way, um, but I, I just it has to be wireless because my last version was on my lap so but on top of this board uh, we have let me slide out of the way zoom in again uh, when it lets me there we go I don't know if that's better or worse um, so we have throttle control um, these ESCs actually have reverse so reverse forwards you get the idea left right you get the idea uh, I'm experimenting with this button uh, in this board, um, this guy here, we actually have uh, a compass and what I'm trying to do is uh, when you push that button it will hold a heading. Um, now that is out of laziness but I, I've noticed if this kayak, if there's a little bit of a breeze now and again, it does knock it about a bit so it's nice to have that do it for you. We've got a screen as well, um, gives me some feedback, some diagnostic stuff for now, pretty up later. Two pots. Um, now the so this this guy's running a is it 328p Arduino or an Arduino Mini Pro as it's known as I'm talking about the main chip on it and this is a Teensy this is actually an ARM processor 3.2 now the reason I went with Teensy over that because this has like 20 times the you know memory etc it's very important because with that version I had a lot of problems with um, using a bu there's a buffer size for this screen because it's no LED. And uh, I had a lot of problems with it running out of memory or had to be very, very refined, let's put it that way. So in here, you can probably see there's the um, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy and then you've got the compass. Now, stupidly enough, I did it in a rush and I put them next to each other so that it works great until you start sending data. All plug and play. It's using a standard 18650 of the boost up, but um, I can't spin it up, but I will jump to video in a sec of me having a... Well, very bad video skills, my dad. Me having a play in the bath, in, in not in that way. Um, but uh, let me zoom back out. Let me turn it on then. So, um, switch. Oh, am I going to get all this shot? All right, I'll put this in. Put this in. There we go. Beautiful. Switch main power on to the ESCs because there's an arming procedure in here. Plug this guy in. Hopefully, it doesn't go crazy or I need to fix some bugs. Switch this guy on. Hopefully you can. There we go. Okay, so now it's powered up. So I'm going to bring this guy up here. So we've actually got amps, current throughput and amps. Up top right, you've got um, amp power, so consumed. Uh, you've got the volts of the battery. I can. I'm going to eventually do the curve, proper, pro the proper curve for the battery, because um, at the moment you know you can't use voltage to remaining capacity because it's not quite linear. Sent and receive messages. Now because this is the first time I've done wireless I'm going to see how that works in the world but I've seen the range can be up to quite a hundred plus meters basically so if I see there's problems I'll notice that these start to slow down. Then we have, uh, oh, then we have me dropping stuff. Um, then we have uh, rudder position so you see it's 90 so it's direct ahead. 90, 45, 45. I don't want to move because if I move that thing too much, it hits the uh, housings. Then we've got compass, so you get the idea. Compass, 
and then uh, you should see A is your autopilot. Uh, so let me just move this around. You can see I smoothed it out because it is, yeah. And then I don't know how well this will work. I'm a bit scared. Oh, hold it up. Oh no, I've got some code to, oh. <laughs> I wonder why it's quiet. I took the fuse out, didn't I? But I'll, I'll zip to a video in a second, you'll see that. But um, you get the idea of the autopilot. So you turn that way, turn that way. You get the idea. And then reset, basically. Um, yeah, that's it. So uh, let me jump to the video of me uh, with my terrible camera. Video. I, only had, I only had two hands. This is the problem. Um, me in the bath, uh, having a quick zip around with this, so we right, cut to that back in a sec. All right. Well, as you could see, has I've actually limited the power on the forwards and the backwards on that because it's too insane. Now it's not too insane for this gear because these are 60 amp ESCs. They do get hot, but I'll keep an eye on that. But the uh, mount on the actual boat is glued on, so and, and you know it's an inflatable material. Um, so if I put full thrust on these, you'll probably rip the uh, mount off the boat and have a very de deinflating time. Let's put it that way. Uh, not so ideal. Um, so when I was playing with this at that kind of actually, this has got more. I said it, I need to drop the power down a bit more. But in this version that I took out, the first version, you got about five miles an hour. And considering uh, this kayak is very flat bottomed, it's very un, un water dynamic. If there's a word for that, um, that's pretty good. You're like you, it's a brisk walk, um, and uh, it, this can run for about two hours at full power. Uh, what's about, it draws about was it 14, 15 amps at full power, so 300 watts. Uh, yeah, just thought I'd show you that, and uh, I will get back to the weather balloon next because, as you noticed, I have a lot of 3D printed parts here. It was actually to test the uh, um, time lapse settings, different ones, so I can actually then go back to the weather balloon project, make that frame up, and then show it to you, and then assemble it up, find some dry ice, and uh, have a very chilling time with it. Um, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Thanks.